Right. Right. Welcome back, everybody. Isn't that a song in this country, Bloody Well, right? It is. Was That was... Um, Oh, it'll Breakfast come to in me. America. No, it'll come to me. It Breakfast was Super Tramp, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, look, uh, we have more uh, sparring about to commence uh, between myself okay, and look, the wonderful Paul Reed No Smith. PRS t-shirt, but an Anderton's t-shirt. I know. I'll give you an Anderton's t-shirt before we go. I, now, I actually would like one. I will get you one. Paul, you have been doing the rounds of European uh, guitar stores for the last couple of weeks. I've seen you on YouTube at least 10 times. Um, are you saving the best till last with Andertons or have you been avoiding us? <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> I've never avoided you. You've always been a hoot, a gas. <laughs> look, the question is whether I have the energy. You're going to look at your phone no, in I've the just middle thought, of the interview, I've really? Thought to myself, I want everybody to know, I know. that he picked up I just his thought, addiction. It, why don't you just get out a, I just a needle it was. and I, do that? I just turned it off because I thought we've, oh, we've, we've, it, somebody just Here. just went with no notice. Okay. They went, right, Jazz. we're rolling. We're Jazz. in. All right, look. Uh, we'll, I'll do the same thing, yeah. okay? Okay. So. But, but, you know, that's just not cool. I know it wasn't. It was very, but the beauty, see, that camera would have just shown you. <laughs> I'd have edited myself out so no one would have known that I'd turned my phone off. But it's fine. We're in it. I saved the by far best joust for last. Although some guy in Germany, oh come on, asked me what day I was going to retire, who's going to replace me, every single legacy question you could possibly possibly ask, and I said, I I, I was dumbfounded. It was two hundred people in a room, um, and I he, I said why? He says because I ask myself the same questions. Maybe you can ask me the question for me, oh, so which I thought was cool. Session. And I just got real quiet for about forty five seconds, and I mm. turned around in front of everybody. I said. 15 years. I, I, gave him this t I gave him this time frame. You get mm. me for 15 more years, that's it, I'm done. Do you know, bizarrely, last time I saw you, you actually told me the age that you yeah. thought you would be when you would retire. Yeah. So I won't. Anyway. What was that? Uh, it changes, you know. Do you want me to say it? Yeah. You said 72, I you think know, you said. No, you are completely wrong. Seven, it was. No, I told you my father died at 83. I thought I was going to outlive him. S 72 would only be six years from now, and I've got at least 15 or 20 okay. left well, that, But so I that's think that's just, that's just more energy than since the last time. why are people asking yeah, what who? day are you going to die, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Now, you wanted to joust? We started, all right? No, this is it. Now, you should know, if you have not seen uh, myself and Paul on camera before, um, How old will you be when you retire? Who's going to take your place? Yeah, I'm. Okay, I'm right, selling to the highest you bidder. Die? Yeah, anytime. Oh, the highest Absolutely. bidder. Absolutely, highest oh, I'm bidder. Selling Let's do it. That's Let's just go great. for it. I do it tomorrow. Um, so, uh, <laughs> okay, you, you wanted me, you got me, right? <laughs> so yes, Paul and I will talk about guitars. We'll try to talk about guitars, yeah. um, but um, we, I think we are, uh, we have, a, we have a shared connection of uh, bizarre humor. Did I humor. answer the question about whether I cared about you a lot? Um, I suppose what I should ask myself is... Why uh, does it matter? Yeah, why does it matter? Why do I care what the answer is? I suppose, do you care about me? Yeah, or I Anderson's? actually do. I think you we know, do, don't you know we? Why? why? Because it's been great fun. It's incredibly informative. The definition of an expert is somebody in a very complicated area that solves complicated problems over and over again. That would be you mm, guys. Thank you. And your videos are watched all across the world. You were the first one to break the boundary of the oceans. And we have... And congratulations. Mm. And John Mayer says he watches you. He videos. does, apparently. And talks to Pete on Instagram things all the time. Really? I'm very jealous, yes. You're um, jealous. I am jealous. Of yes. your own cohort. Yes, I'm you super jealous. I, all I have to do, I just stare at a cardboard cutout of John oh, Mayer. Pret I pretend I'm talking to him. That's Pete great. actually does in real life. Um, I yes, took a and picture thank you. with that cardboard cutout in another store today, and I sent it to Paige. She thought she says, "I look so that John," because <laughs> it looks so real. She thought it was shot. It's very off-putting when we put it on camera. Yeah. Anyway, look. Let's try for at least five to ten minutes to talk about guitars. Okay. It's lovely to see you, and you are. I, I, you know what? I get up every morning and thank my lucky stars that I work in this industry mm -hmm. because it's people like you and characters like you, and you're one of the best characters ah, that make sweet. the whole thing. You know, Actually, we, we live in a very good industry. I've been to other industries where you wouldn't want to be around the people as much as no. you want to be around the people in this industry. One hundred percent. This is good. This is great. So. Look, you guys go from strength to strength. I, I, I remember, you know, in the last 10 years, 
10 or 15 years, just the enormous strides that you've gone to, to sort of, you know, establish yourself as, you know, uh, one of the, the, the most important guitar manufacturers in the world. And not just guitars now, amplifiers, pedals, the whole stuff. And you can see, as I said, we've known each other for 25 odd years or something like that. You're as passionate, enthusiastic about it now as you were when I first mm -hmm. met you. I am actually. Um, it's no, not, it's actually, it's not an people act. People are like, it's not an act, no. What, what's interesting is having, being in Japan, only being home for two days and coming here and trying to figure out how to deal with what is the jet lag. And I figured out how to sleep sitting up, oh. either in the plane or in the car. And literally, instead of fighting it and having some plan about, the sleep schedule. I just allowed it to do whatever it did, and somehow I've made it here. I feel energized right now. I feel alive, active. I'm not waking. The coffee is <laughs> helping, but Kicking it's not in. what. But I not what I need to be here. And I find you highly entertaining because you react so violent to anything that's oh, ever said to you. It's, it's, but I know I can do it with you because you'll take it the right way and I, just come back like with, double barreled the other I way. Double which, is, back. which is how it right. should be. So you are a target and I am a target in this video. Now 100%. Now you see, now, now you get it. Do you see? Right. There are so many microphones and cameras in this place. It's just, it, we need every are angle. Are those two real clones in the back? Yeah, can, real ones. And is that the purple one? It's not. That's not. But they're Those real. Are real. You want one? Well, not to have, but you I need just got one. Back from Japan, how much? You know how much they're going for? Uh, Those are like five thousand quid, and the the gold ones are between seven and ten thousand quid. I found a deal on one for seven and walked. Wow. So that. So I. That's I've 10, been, quid a quid. Yeah, so right I was, I've been looking to buy a clon actually to give away. So the idea is when we hit a million subscribers, we're giving a clon away. And on Not that one. Yeah, yeah, one of those, absolutely. And then on the day I, well, on the day I why, bought it. Why make a mistake? You could have given all kinds of things away. You could have given Pete's guitar away. No. Oh, I'm not just, so away. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm bored of doing videos showing you how, you know, every other clon clone there is sounds yeah. exactly the same. But um, That's not a clone. No, so I that's hear. not a clone. That's when you say you're. I'm telling you, that's a from scratch circuit. It's not a clone. No, I get. So we'll talk about that. I think. So anyway, yes. Let's get. Let's let's try and do this. So what should we talk? We've got Robin Ford's new guitar. That's a Did new you announcement. Play it? I haven't played it yet. No. Um, so I'm doing that I'm in sorry, this video you were live. High on the list to get one. One of the first ones overseas. You did get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, there, right so behind don't, you. So don't act like I got it, but I was too busy to try it. Right. It's freaking Robin Ford's I know, guitar. I know. So, but I knew you were coming. Peter, have you so tried the pickups? Yeah, and were they very clear? Yeah, really clear. Mm. He hasn't tried. No, I did. I did. He did. I watched him try it. I watched him try it. <laughs> it was one These of those are... br like brilliant recoveries when you have to go into class and five minutes to get your homework done in the hall. That was one of those. Uh, it's <laughs> that was one, so, one, that was so one we'll, of those. We'll try that. We've um, we've got two. Well, one amplifier that's fairly new still, and yeah. one that's absolutely hot yeah. off the press. Yeah. But both from the same family, the Hendrix. Can we say Hendrix, or do we have to say no, HDRX? No, no. You, it's got a signature. So on it's the, the full. It it's, says authentic it's Hendrix allowed. on the back. So it's got his signature on it. Which, I, you know, I mean, look, I had to ask the spirits, was, was it about, okay? Yeah, I was about I to say. I God, I did. And it was okay. Well, that's cool. So these are these are epic. So this will be a first time of trying this one, which is cool. And then the pedals, uh, which are all fairly new, but I have tried yeah. um, and really liked as well. So we can, we can do that. And then we've got... I didn't realize how many Paul Reese Smith guitars we've managed to collect over the last few years. And you've got, you've got Pete's Paul's guitar. It's yeah. brilliant. You've I got, like this guitar. Uh, you know why is, I like it? Why is it that? It works. This is still my favorite P PRS that I own, which is a satin finish, a uh, custom 24. I love, I just, I love how it rings Are you still and how it plays. A band? No, no. Have you given that up? I haven't played in a band since I was about 30. So yeah, I, I should. Uh, that was last year. I wish it was. <laughs> We've got this. Look at this. The one, a, one of a kind, only purple silver sky, which. Uh, how, why did I give that to you, Pete? How did you get it? How did you get it? So, I, so I wanted to buy Pete. I can't remember why, but yeah, whatever. There we was a gift we for didn't Pete. Finish that. No, 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 you didn't. No, so no, no, no. We're not. We are not allowed by by law to make a color he doesn't approve. So. so but so I text you are John. Allowed. No, I text John. You went around and I, me? And I said, oh, would you, you mind? Went, and I what said, did he say? Would you mind if I resprayed one of these purple to give to Pete for, as a present? Say? 
And he said, you do whatever you like. Now, the Literally, words, it's your guitar, yep, you paid for it, you yep, can take it. you do whatever now, he you didn't like. Give you permission, he said, you can do whatever you like. That sounds politically correct. So that's what we did. Then we've got, we've got an- And a, then a, you a, gave it to Pete. Why? Why? He's Danish. Why? We must have seen, because I think a lot of people buy guitars from Anderson because they love watching. It's real coffee. It's not granules or anything. It's proper, you know. That's what so you know, so you're saying the in this beans. country. A friend of mine in this country, they had a baby, and I get a message back with a big smile with the wife and the baby and him. Proper chuffed. Proper chuffed. chuffed. Yeah. yeah, chuffed. I think. I, I, I knew what it meant because just the joy yeah. coming off the phone, right? Yeah. But we don't say that. We, we had uh, you it's a great saying we had Maybe a similar Americans, we should start saying proper chuffed yeah. you know somebody hands you a good glass of scotch and you hit it and you go why did oh. you you used in a previous video you used the word grinder meaning something else and i had to remind you what a grinder was as an app yeah you were horrified i was Just but the, find a grinder out. in america is not what it well, is here. anyway so um anyway Look, we got we five, have, nine, we all, you have all kinds of terms you use in this country we don't use and we have all kinds of country terms in this country well you t you, you guys don't use you don't use the word g-e-e-t you don't say it g-e-e-t did you eat yet jake you don't say oh i see did you, you don't right. say it i you know you still use the word fanny to describe something that we definitely what? don't describe. No, 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 no. That's uh, a cigarette. A fanny. Hmm? A, f a fanny. Oh, I thought you said something else. No, I didn't. A fanny is, is a woman's tush. Well, over here it is. I thought in America it was something to do with like a bag that you wear oh, around your... they fanny packs. Yeah. Because it's around your waist next to your fanny. A fanny's the bottom in America, Yes, of course yeah, it is. Yeah, in this country, country. It's the we're not <laughs> wow. Now, now, now we are out of bounds. We're Go out to of the bounds. next subject. Okay. The, Can done. we, where should we start then? What do you want to tell me about first? Do you want to tell me about how this, you convinced? Uh, so a lot of questions okay. about this thing. When we did the 100, Hendrickson, and the 50, the first thing that stunned me when we took that circuit and cloned it, because we opened mm -hmm. it up at a museum, was that it made the bass pickup sound like a treble pickup which I thought was fascinating. And if you turn the amp all the way up and you use the bass pickup, it sounded like treble pickup. And I was watching videos, he's using the bass pickup all the time, sounding like a treble pickup. So that was interesting. Then I get a lot of questions on this trip. It's not possible for a 20 watt amp to sound like a 50 or 100. So we dimed it. Mm -hmm. Sounded exactly like the 100, just quieter. And the, the, their words for the 100 was it was devastatingly loud. But this was, I had to wear ear earmuffs to turn the signal oh, sure. all the way so up. The, and the but Hendrix... it was doing the double note thing when you turn it, all the things that the 100 watt did, it was doing. And this, the thing that's not clear, and this is important, we're gonna do real geeky stuff mm -hmm. for a second. If you use the same preamp in a 50 watt and a 100 watt, they should sound the same. But in the old amps, they did the power supplies different. Right. But you ha if you use a 100 watt power supply in a 50 watt amp, the the preamp sounds like a 100 watt. Right. But you've got to filter it the same, it's got to be the same voltages, same current, same all that stuff. And so this has the exact same preamp with the exact same voltages as the 50 and the 100. The only thing different is there's two preamp tubes that can produce 20 watts, yeah. not four preamp um, power right. amp tubes yeah. that can produce 100 watts. Yeah. And so it sounds the same. And they didn't believe it. They said, well, this 100 watt, when you turn it all wet, makes this double note up top. Well, this does it. If you're plugged straight into the cabinet, it does it. On the when you got the the, the super lead, the you know the, the, from the Hendrix estate, yeah, but it wasn't wired as a super lead. It was wired halfway between a JTM forty five right. and a super lead, and they had done lots of things to make sure the that. Tubes that was didn't my grow. question: was you know what when you opened it up, what had been modified in uh, it? Everything. Everything. Right. It was that the person at uh, West Coast Oregon and Amps had modified it. They didn't have the laydown transformer anymore. All the voltages have been reduced. I think at the time it had 6550s in it so it wouldn't blow up. They did not mm -hmm. want quads to blow. He needed that amp to work yep. for the whole show. And his job was to push it to the limit. So which is the one place where quads would go. There was no master volume. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear that was his PA, not his amplifier. That, so, I mean, I don't even know nowadays how you, most guitar players can't even understand that if you're playing, imagine playing outdoors yeah. to 
10,000 people yeah. or more and just going, yeah, just, I'll just turn the amp up loud. It's like, it's just, this is nuts, isn't it? But, and then that creates a sound and then we're all going, how do I get that sound? But you know, in my living room and it's just like, forget it. You know? I bought two Marshall 412 cabinets and a 100 watt Marshall PA top in Derby. Derby, yeah, Derby? Derby, yeah. 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 Was the original they came together. The yeah. singer had walked into a shop at some point, yeah. and that's what he bought to sing through. And the guitar player had bought the cabinet and yeah. the thing to play through. There was no microphone. Yeah, yeah. A microphone yeah, on the for, singer yeah, to yeah. sing it through the, the hundred watt player. top. Yeah. So that's not well understood. But when you do it, it's powerful. Watching Mark Latiri mm. do the video with the two cabinets all the way up yeah. into the hall and the look on his face and it was shaking mm. the building mm. but there was no pa right it's, it's it's still what we say you know and again pete and i we we, we agree absolutely on this but ev whenever we're talking to guitar players that have chosen to um go to the dark side and use digital products instead of real guitar amplifiers um there is this sense of look i get it that you know it's convenience and it does sound still pretty amazing but where's the excitement of just loudness you know that there's there's that certain magic as a guitar player that that makes your guitar do mad things and your fingers do mad things where because it's just bloody loud and i sort of miss that i think when i'm you know i like to have things even in this room i like it when we're a bit oh yeah that was loud wasn't it but it's like exciting you know so i got to play with creed once Right, a huge PA system. Okay, and every time we did sound check, I'd always play, but I would never play at the volume I was going to play with when the band kicked in. So the sound man had me set. Right, and when I played the solo next to Mark, he had already had it up, and when I bent a note, the PA bent. <laughs> <laughs> and he, the sound man liked it so much he left it. Yes. Same thing with Carlos. What an unusual would, sound Carlos man. Carlos played with us, and he would go over and turn my amp up. I wanted the PA to do the yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want the sound to come off the amp, go straight at the sound man, and then it not be in the PA. And so I've always tended to play at a reasonable volume and use the PA as my yep. amp, right? It's a very, very interesting event. I don't know why they high pass a vocal. They take the low end out of it. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to leave room for the bass drum. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So there's a lot of things now that are different than they used to be. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how many sound checks I've been in and I've stopped the whole band. I go up to the mic and say, you've high passed Mia. She's got a beautiful bass in her voice. Please turn it back flat. And they would do it and this gorgeous note would come out of her voice. So, um, I, look, it's changed. It's yeah. different. The digital thing is so powerful that they don't want to even use an analog desk anymore because they have a stick from the night before mm -hmm. that plugs in all the all the compressors and all the outboard gear they normally yeah. would carry. But it's it's it is doable. It is usable. Um, we, but we, difficult. We, did, we were doing a we were doing a session yesterday for another guitar brand, and we'd hired a local uh, venue. And we just needed to use the sound system and it had a digital desk in it. Mm -hmm. And every time we just, like this, there were all these people in the room just going, I can see that's the volume control. We would turn it up and then the digital bit of it would just go, no, I'm turning you back down again. And it was, it was this really bizarre sort of like, Seriously? can't I just turn them? And it's like, why does everything have to be so faders that just went back to where yeah, it was? Yeah, it just went back to where it was before. And I was just like, why right. does everything have to right. be so, so complicated? So we're the number three electric guitar maker in America. Yeah, in and the world. Just, no, in, in electric, really? no, in, no, in America. I would have said in the world. No, okay. there are the places that make more guitars. But you just said that somebody was more important to you that you rented a venue oh, yesterday yeah. and I only get a video. Yeah. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, if you'd have been oh, here. Oh, uh, this yeah. is, no, 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 no. Okay. Don't, <laughs> don't accuse me of not loving you. We're not going there. Let's go back. Come on, Hendrix. I Which company was it? Uh, if I was to say it was a company that I own shares in, uh, that, that's why we basically went all out yesterday. Uh, so. <laughs> if that's true, I'll shut up. <laughs> so, look, I'm a big fan. So I like what you've done. First and foremost, I think, if people aren't familiar with um, 
the old Marshall Super Lead amplifiers. They had like a, a, a treble and a bass channel, uh, and you could choose which one you plugged into, or, or people would jump them and they'd run they a cable from the other. They would always double jack them, right? So this is internally yeah, double jacked so all the time. Really clever. So that's yeah. the idea of the treble and the bass volume is you can just yeah. mix and blend yeah. what you wanted. And then the the, the bright switch has three positions on this and two positions on that. And if on an old Super Lead, if you turn the if you turn the volume down to about one or two, the treble will take your head off. Yeah. It didn't calm down till about five or six. Yeah. Um, so you can turn the bright switch on and off. So there's two big differences, I suppose, between the the, the, the fifty, the hundred, and the twenty. What one is is you know the size and the volume obviously is a little less on on yeah. the twenty, but the price is massively less, isn't it? So these these are sort of indicative of like a you know custom shop US made stuff. That's hand wired in America. Yeah. And this is crazy. I mean this is seven ninety nine I think. So it's just like this is gonna be you know, anyone looking at perhaps who's looked at the Hendrix amps before and gone, Oh I'd love one of those, but it's never gonna happen. This is where you need to be looking now. So do you wanna give us a do you wanna give us a bit of a blast? I mean I've got the, the twenty plug the fifty sorry plugged in and I'll give a blast of that as well. Right, so it's just look, glorious. Let's turn the gain all the way up and turn the master volume down, okay? Oh, so, do you know, I, I apologize if I wasn't listening before, so that's the other big difference on the 20, master volume, not on here. Okay. Got that we, proper fuzzy compressed overdrive well, tone. And as e I turn even it up, it, it'll get less and less and less. That's just normal. I mean, oh, yes. Eric Johnson Clang. has one of these. Right. And he, he said, you know, it's the first time the master works, I'm happy. Oh, really? Yeah. If he's always, if he gets any up, it's had a master put in, he takes it out yeah. immediately, but he left this alone. Now, the, now the thing about these old amps is they were fantastic clean amps. Yeah. But people don't know because they don't normally turn the master all mm -hmm. the way up and just barely crack. Yeah. Barely. It, but... police records in Sweet Home Alabama where those clean tones were played on Marshalls. Mm -hmm. So for me, the thing cleans up beautifully. You just got to have the courage to turn uh -huh. the preamps down. I, I, mean, I mean, that's, if I just grab... A Super Reverb at three starts to break up. An old Marshall on one and a half starts to break up. Are you going to play through with the amp? You I'm just going to do that because the 50's plugged in as well. All right. And it's just, it's, it's that, because you're talking about the clean sound. It's, that's the bit that you don't... <laughs> My life. Okay, so oh, let's just—it's—it's it's, it's like it's barely on. But that's what I'm saying about the the headroom for the clean sound is epic. But even more Nothing epic if I tune my guitar. It's right in my ear. It is. We, the cab is your side. I apologise. The cab for the twenty is my side. We should have done that the other way around, shouldn't we? But well, we can still can. No, we're not. We're going to leave it alone, and I'm going to go after him. That's okay. Don't worry about it. He he. If he can't control. I, right now the volume controls are in my beck and call, so go on, do it again. I've got no reverb on here, no pedals, play, no nothing. Play, play. This thing's killing loud. It's stupid loud, it's, it's yeah. just... But it's like you say, it's this whole, I don't really know, it must have been, it must have been something to do with like the, 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 the decade, the generation that I grew up in, of this idea of you had Fender amps for clean sounds and Marshall amps for dirty sounds. And it was just like, I think some of these, like JTM 45 on the right setting is one of the best sounding clean amplifiers ever, ever, ever. But hey. The original circuit is exactly the same as a high watt tweed twin. Is it? It's the same circuit. Of a, of a JTM-45. If you take a Marshall and turn it around and put it in, the four inputs are exactly the same. 
I love how much uh, plagiary was going on in sort well, of you think know, about early it. music. Think about it. <laughs> music gear. It I mean. had two. It had a bright channel. It had a normal yeah. channel. Yeah. A, a, on a on a on a high powered hundred watt tweed twin, a treble, mid range bass, and presence. It was. It had the same number of switches. It was just in the back of the amp. Mad. I always thought high watt sort of came ten years after Marshall in terms of just yeah, but their I wasn't sort of talking lineage. About high I was talking about a Fender. Sorry. High watt. Oh, sorry. Tweed, high power tweed. A high power tweed. Sorry. Uh, it's the just high power tweed tune was a different yeah. schematic than the than the forty five watt super. Yeah. And yeah. It, and it, you know it wasn't a basement. Yeah. Different circuit. They put a, a cathode follower in it so, so that the tone controls would be clear. Interesting. Look, we'll leave these plugged in. I really. Um, is there any sense on the 50 that you can get drive from it without it just being crazy loud? Or is it just you got well, using an attenuator uh, with no. it? Or? Well, that in order to show people what Hendrix actually played through, we need to not put a master volume in it. We had yeah. to be, we had to reproduce the amp. We mm -hmm. didn't reproduce the look. Yep. We reproduced the amp. Mm -hmm. The one thing we did stick with is that the heat of the tubes goes up. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a fender amp, the heat of the tubes is going into the chassis. Yeah. This is going into the cabinet, right? Interesting. Um, and that, I, I, I just, sorry, just, I don't know that people are really, uh, take a second just to hear what If Paul the said fender there. knobs are up here. You're talking about the way the heat vents. That's it, like right. heat rises, right? That's so right. the fact that, the fact that on the Marshall, the heat would rise. effectively rise away from away the from rest the, of the amplifier. Yeah, that's correct. Compared to a fender where it would rise it's, into, into the, the amplifier. Into the amplifier, and you need more airspace to keep the chest. So that, you're right. saying that, that that's a significant part of why the amps had the character that they had? No. Or, it was more of a significant part of the ergonomics of the amp, that this was up here at an oh, angle. Oh, I see. So a visual yeah, but, thing, right. But we had a choice. We could do it American style mm -hmm. with the knobs up here, or English style with it down here. Yeah. Um, I see. And if for me, you know, turning the chassis upside down and putting it in a combo yeah. is kind of where it came from. Look, yeah. if you steal from one place, it's stealing. If you steal from ten places, it's research. <laughs> uh, and they're different enough that it's research to me. Um, uh, and they, as far as I can tell, looking at these circuits, Less and less bass, more and more high mid-range. Less mm -hmm. and less bass, more and more high range because they needed to cut through with the drums and everything else. So if you listen to an old JTM 45, they're a lot thicker sounding. Mm -hmm. Look, the original cabinet was 812s, yeah, and they cut it in half, just like all the SVT cabinets. They were 810s. Yeah. They, people started cutting them in half because yeah. they couldn't carry them around. So to me, it was just a progression of trying to make these artists happy. Yeah. I saw a pre-basket weave Marshall cabinet today, pinstripe. Have you ever seen one? I don't think so, no. I have a picture on my phone. I was like, what? I've never, I mean, I've maybe seen a picture. Yeah. Never saw one. So no way of getting real any internal amp drive out of this unless we're playing. I wasn't gonna do it, no. If somebody no, wanted to buy. It's fine. The, the K-O-C-H, the Cook uh, Power Soak or something, mm -hmm. fine, do it. But if you want what Hendrix played through, that's what he played through. Yeah. Now, it doesn't look exactly the same, but it's laid out the same. Yeah. And yeah. it's the same circuit. And I've compared it to a lot of really old Marshalls of yeah. exactly the same. I know exactly what year it was, but they had done so much to keep it from blowing tubes. Well, because 600 volts on those EL34s is right on the edge of them popping all the time. All the time. And you got to mm -hmm. buy a straight. They turn cherry, blow up, boom. I suppose that was back in the day, though, where even the local hardware store was probably selling valves. It's not like nowadays where you got to spend yeah. hundreds and hundreds of pounds just to buy a set. You could buy the drugstore when I was a kid. Really? They That's had brilliant. a tube tester and you, they had the tubes below and you could buy them, you'd buy them in the, in the drugstore. Amazing, amazing. So that's why we didn't put a master volume. No, that's cool. Because I wanted it to be true to what he used. Yeah. And quite frankly, what ended up happening is all these rock stars started to get these amps. They didn't want to sound like Hendrix. They wanted to sound like themselves. When Latiri plugged the amp in and plugged yeah. his pedal board in, he was, it was him. Yeah. And he liked how clean and open and beautiful it sounded, which is what you were enjoying. Mm. No, I do. I like, I, I mean, I like the driven sound for Hendrix as well, but it's probably not my 
favorite driven sound. I like the cleanness of it. I like the headroom. I just yeah, I well, think it's, it's got a lot of headroom. Tons of headroom. And some Marshalls by '63 or '64 got what I call jumpy. You would play a note and it would be it would jump out and come back, and jump out and come back. This was before that, where it sounded much more like a clean Fender amp. Um, Interesting. But look, in the original old. Um, owner's manual it said turn it up till it distorts and turn it down one number <laughs> that didn't happen but uh, because you're, they needed yeah. it to do a job yeah but that i think that was the happy accident i think i've read that on old box amplifiers again it's this idea of the owner's manual or whatever the the right thing to do was turn it up until it distorted and then just go but that but at that point it's like things are going wrong so don't you know and then guitar players went no no i like no, that no, no, i'm no, gonna turn like it all that, the way up yeah. do it all the time um let's Pass me the the, the, the the Robin Ford. I'm conscious of the fact that you okay. know we have a table I'm uh, reserved at some point. I'm going to use my cable this time because that thing's blowing my head. Yes, off. I agree. I good it. idea. We're good. Um, so we'll. Pete, this is a nice guitar. I like it. Thank you, Oz. It's beautiful. Plays good. good. Yeah. So. But the reason I like it, Pete, the reason I like it is it's clear on the low strings and thick on the high. Right. Like a piano, bright on the low strings and Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to plug in okay. that cable up there and I can use my tuner then. So I am, I am coming out the cab behind me, which is cool. Uh, no, now I'm in the wrong one, aren't I? So I, I want that cable. Okay. Right, we're back in the room. Uh, Paul said some lovely things about me whilst I uh, was tuning this guitar up, but you'll never hear them because uh, we've edited them all out. Would you like me out. to repeat it? <laughs> I thought this was a live stream. So, Robin Ford. Yeah. Uh, I met Great Bo guitar I've player. I met Robin two or three times. Extraordinary sound in his hands. Yes. Oh my God, um, what a guitar We've player. done events with him where he's brought his dumbbell along and, and uh, a couple of one or two of his other famous guitars. He's got a lovely Telecaster that I know he had at one of the shows. Um, I must admit, the thing with Robin, when I talked to him about it, he was never, apart from that really old Fender Elite thing that he did back in the 80s with Fender, he never really tied himself to a brand because I think he always just wanted the freedom to be able to just go, I'll just use, no, I want to use the right still guitar. Wants that, he still wants the case. freedom. But you must, have, you must have convinced him, you know, I imagine most guitar brands, if not all guitar brands, would love to have an artist like Robin, you know, do a signature with them. So what did you do to convince him uh, that he should he should go down the PRS route? And, and what is this I've model largely really based on? I've never really told the whole story, but I'll tell you Ooh. what, for you, I'll tell the story. Okay, thanks, Paul. We were in Frankfurt, mm -hmm. and we had lunch together, and I showed him a guitar that I was playing, and he really liked it. It was the very first Dragon prototype. And he really, so we're going back really quite a long liked time, it. aren't we? And I should have given him the guitar. Mm -hmm. I could have made another one, but because it was the first one and I didn't really have an understanding, so I made him another mm -hmm. guitar, which he never loved. He liked it. He spent months on the phone trying to get the sound straightened out, but we weren't able to get it right. And he gave me a full shake, but it just wasn't, it didn't wet his whistle. He wanted it to be a little clearer and more the tone that. He has this big, thick sound in his hands, and he needs it to be clear for, mm -hmm. for the sound in his hands to make it. And I saw him at a dealer, a very large dealer in America, and I said, Robin, I finally got that pickup thing straightened out the way you want, because the pickup says, you know, with the 8515s and LTs and all that stuff, it had matured to a clearer mm -hmm. spot. And for me, I, I wanted it to be... If it was going to be clear, it would be fine, but I didn't want an ice pick sound at all. Mm -hmm. right? And, I, and he, I said, I think I've got it fixed. And first of all, that I admitted that it was my fault, not his fault. And then I, was, I thought I had it fixed. He goes, okay. And he goes in the other room, he grabs the guitar of his hands, plugs it into a little Fender amp. He goes, this is much better. <laughs> and so we started making him guitars. I wasn't planning on doing an artist model. All I wanted to do was my job, which is to make an extraordinary guitar player happy. Yeah. And we worked together for a couple of years. I think he and Bev discussed the artist model, not me. And then I got involved. He wanted the headstock bigger because he was used to it looking bigger to his eye. He wanted, 
he had one guitar that had this uh, single coil adjustment on it that he really liked. Um, and then we started working on the pickups and we started working on engraving the pickups yeah, they so cool, they would be they? his. And then he's but, so sensitive in a good way that if the seventh fret was literally a half a piece of paper too low, like a thousandth of yeah. an inch, he would go, something wrong with the seventh fret. And, I, and instead of thinking he was nuts, I would take and put magic marker all over the frets and take a, uh, a, a thing that was leveled within an inch of its life and barely, barely touch it with the weight of the device. And it would show that he was right, but it wasn't a lot. Mm. And I found him to be very open. He flew a bunch of times to PRS to work on the pickups and the guitar. He was open about the neck shape. He was open about the setup. He, but he wanted it so that he was happy. And has he got? A, is it his neck carp? It feels a little wider to me than a regular McCarty's kind of neck carp. No, or? it's it's about the same. Is it? Yeah. It. No. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. Try. I mean, it's, it feels a little wider, but. No, it's that it's diving away a little bit right, more. Right. It's just got no, less but on this the sides. Is, but look, that's one thing we're good at. This neck shape thing, we're good at it. Trebly on the bass strings and clear. Uh, 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 not ee 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 ee. It's it's a it doesn't sound like a dolphin or a bee. It sounds like a, 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 I love, a vocal note. I love that you're tuning the the, the you know the, tonally. You're tuning this acoustically, you know, or you know you are trying to do that. And and uh, you know because there's so much of an argument goes on on the internet about you know oh woods and stuff like that don't make a difference. But, I, but yeah, I've always believed right, that the, the whole thing is Let's a jigsaw. Do, let's just do this. You pick any guitar off the wall mm -hmm. in here. I don't pick. Mm -hmm. And we'll compare the acoustic tone of this guitar to that guitar. Just do it now. Well, I... No pickup is going to change this. This, yeah, no, I this is the initial starting point. And that's the point, isn't it? Of the just starting at that. You can't... There's nothing you can do to physically change how a guitar sounds acoustically. Actually, you can, only... you can do a huge amount. No, I mean, as in the pickup can't. The pickup can't, can't fix it. Fix but what if the I guitar... change the way these were made yeah. and change the nut material and change how this was glued in yeah. and the fret level and worked on the bridge and all that stuff, I can no, change the acoustics. I, that, yeah, if I if it sounded like I didn't agree with that, it came out wrong. What what I meant was. You, you can only start with what you've got. You know, these are only basically amplifying what this thing is doing. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much, Oz. And then you have guitar players like Eric Clapton that are so powerful, no matter what they play, sounds like them. Well, that's, yeah. That's I, also, Yeah, I love you know, that as well. I love, I love that you can give any guitar to Eric Clapton or Slash or, or, or Carlos Santana, whatever, and you just go, that's who they are yeah, immediately. But they're all really picky. Right. And Robin's really picky. And the, here you plug this. Come on, guitar. we were gonna we were gonna have a little noodle on this, weren't well, we? Or just at least. Uh, so this is again no pedals. Um, oh. We'll start with the humbuckers then. That's crazy loud, isn't it? Well, oh, because we've got the. Let me just. Am I allowed reverb or is that band? Have I got on or have I got on the board? No, I, I, is, it, is it on at all? No, it's it's on, on very, very slightly. In fact, what is it? It's a Walrus R1 what is uh, on a plate what? reverb setting. Let's okay, just find fine. a spring reverb and maybe a bit more.
So what are, these are the um, 8515 LT inspired starting point? Yeah, that's the beginning. Or, yeah, and then it's uh, that's Robin a, that's tweaks the beginning, them. Yeah. And if you want to do a shootout with any other guitar, go ahead and do it. I, I used to do them all the time. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm comparing these instruments that Robin's getting to his vintage guitars, not to anything new. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm using the benchmark, the watermark of what Leo did and what Ted McCarty did and what Fred Gretsch did and what you know Christian Martin did and all that stuff. So for me, it's looking at when the industry started. Um, it's really interesting. The the, the bigger headstock. I don't. I, I don't think you immediately recognize that it's got a larger headstock until you say, but then when, then you can't unsee it. And I really it's, like it actually. It's, 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 a you, what it's was the his, same exact shape. He wanted it bigger. But just because he's used to the spacing of the tuners or? Uh, or, or looking at a bigger headstock. Right. Um, I, it doesn't matter. He thought it was more handsome and that's fine with me. Yeah. Look, my job's to make Robin happy. Indeed, and, indeed. And quite frankly, these are all selling like in, in day. Has this thing already sold? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, but... That's, uh, you put it up on a web, it's going to go away. This is uh, serial number ends 850, so... Can you hear how clear it is? For Robin, and the way he plays like a saxophone player, that clarity is really important to him. And this is just a really nice piece of rosewood on the board, isn't it? It's so dark, it almost looks ebony, or is... Yep. Do we think that's ebony? Nope. No, we think that's just dark rosewood. I always like that big G chord, you hear all the notes. I like it. So Robin likes the feel of old nitro and we bake these. To, okay. To make it, fa to, to have them be faster, and dry faster. All the nitro we're using now is going to dry over time, just like old yeah. guitars. It's it's a new vintage guitar in my mind. But he wanted us to oh, push yeah, it. You can smell the nitro. Yeah. Smell the nitro. That's, it's, it's the aftershave that I want to bring out. When I do sell Andertons, I'm going to put all my money into... Um, sell the nitro. Uh, smell the nitro. And it's going to be huge. Great. It's going to be absolutely huge. I'm going to have... Um, probably going to get someone like Johnny Depp to... Uh, maybe, you could be the, maybe you could be the face of it. If Johnny won't do it, would you do it? You want me to be, be like a TV face campaign face of, of a, smell of the a, nitro of a cologne business that yeah. you're starting yeah. after you yeah. quit me and you're not doing this anymore and yeah. leave me and Pete out to dry. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't absolutely. know. Why don't you come in 50 50 with me? Sell PRS as well. We'll sell them both and we'll just do I don't smell want to the sell nitro. PRS. I've got massive. I just told you 15 years I got left in me. Look, Anderton's gives you an okay. ability for you to be good at what you're good at. <laughs> Some okay. would say not. Uh, no, I, okay. <laughs> and I do. And again, PRS gives me an ability to be good at what I'm good at. I don't want to go away. But you got to admit, that's beautiful. I really, clear, I do like Without this. sounding ice picky at all. Do you know what I really like? And this is me being, um, I really like the fact it's just a black guitar. So to see. It's, it's almost like, it's, it's that classic, like, you know, don't, I'm understated. You might not even notice I've turned up here, but now I'm going to play and now you're going to have your pants blown off. And it's just like, just, I've just got this regular looking black guitar. But I, I must admit, I think black guitars with arch tops, they hit the light in a certain way that no other color guitar, no other color guitar does. And they just look amazing. Well, so, the guitar player in Whitesnake and the guitar player in Trapeze, and there were a lot of black Les Pauls played in England. Yeah. So that's not unusual for a vintage guitar to be black. Well, not vintage guitars, but I don't, even, I don't think black Les Pauls have been a sort of a catalogue item for Gibson for years. I saw lots of them on the walls on my trip. Vintage ones, you mean? No, new ones. Oh, okay. But I'm look, wrong. it doesn't really matter. Robin wanted a black guitar and I think it's handsome. And now you instantly know it's a Robin Ford because of the color. It's right? quite playable, as in just, you, you know, when you're just, mm. I'm, I'm not being rude. I am right. listening to what you're saying, but I'm also just enjoying playing this fine guitar. Okay, lastly then, before we go and get some food yeah. and uh, pedals. Now, I am familiar with these because we did this video. I, um, I loved your reaction. I know you haven't seen the video. Um, you've been too busy making your own ones over the last two weeks. I loved the fact that you were horrified that we referenced um, 
Bette Midler's flange uh, whilst talking about the wind through the trees pedal. It, um, it was so outside, I didn't even you understand what yes. you said. And I'm not sure, <laughs> and, and I think it might be pretty dark humor. I don't want you to repeat it on this camera shot. Okay. But I'm, look, Bette Midler has done some extraordinary music. Oh, yeah. You know, it's amazing. Wind, was wind it, Beneath was My record, Wings. Kind of Blue. What was that the beautiful record? Well, Wind she Beneath did, My Wings was yeah. her biggest hit. Yeah. And that's what I thought you were sort of referencing there, sort of. But anyway, look, so there are various things. I think there's a there's a, there's a couple <laughs> of... That was one of the slickest things you've ever pulled I'm, in front of I'm me. I'm just going... You just skated yeah, right, right out past. from underneath we're going that going fine. Analogy. So there's definitely, there's surely, surely a Jimi Hendrix reference in Wind Through the Trees and Mary Cries, isn't there? No. No. There, so it's just all there a might be accident. one in Mary Cries, uh, but that wasn't the deal. Wind Through the Trees came from a device that I made yeah. that was an echo device that went into a reverb unit mm -hmm. and it had a flanger on it. And so the, the, the echo, you go bump and it go, zoo, 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 zoo. it sound like Wind Through the Trees, which could be another pedal someday. Yeah. But this was that I had gotten a couple of flangers and I was plugging them in series uh, and in the studio and putting it out left and right so that it got out of the way of the vocal. Mm -hmm. So we had a bunch of experience with flangers being in series. These are in parallel, but it's in, uh, a Leslie's in the flange range. It's about three feet from the low speaker to the high thing. So it's three milliseconds, very quick. Let me go through each one with you. You play. I need, so yeah, I need to have the green cable. I can do this. Is, yeah, and then you need to plug and then what, we need does to this one go back yes in here? please yeah I'll st all right so let me describe this so we're going to do this one time so just get a beautiful little clean tone so we're going to do one flanger okay mm -hmm. go on okay just hold one note okay one note so if i go fast or i go slow and then so that would be one flanger. Now I can add regeneration. I do it again. That's, that's what people think of as a flanger. And then you can add high end. If that's one flanger, I'm going to turn them up about third way each. Here's the other flanger. Put them both on, they fight each other. Yeah, that's the bit I would... It's, an it's a really nice, interesting effect. And when, before we did the video on that, I was kind of like, what, what's the inspiration? Is there a famous double flange pedal or whatever like that? And there really no, wasn't one. It was just, no. just an interesting concept. It was tooking, taking two, tooking. Tooking. Tooking <laughs> two. Yeah, that's, we to don't the... say that in America. Um, it was two <laughs> flangers in series, but I did it in parallel. And I can make this thing sound almost like a univibe. Do you want to hear that? Yes, All yes. Right, so let's do the one. So go pop 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 like a machine gun. You want me to pop 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 play like that? Like I'll show you what. Yeah, yes. The machine gun. He goes. I was. Sorry, I thought I thought you might play like a machine gun, no, no, but no. I see what you. Yeah, I mean, I think some great tones in there. We got some cool kind of um, old Andy Summers kind of tones right. out of it, and um, this is a. I don't know if David Gilmore's ever going to get a chance to play through one of these, but that's like right that up kind of vibe. Way, yeah. yeah, so. The one, my favorite pedal out of the three was the Mary Cries. Okay, so we'll turn that off. So, so Mary Cries is an optical compressor. It's an LA-2A. Right. And uh, it's in a pedal. Um, these are supposed to be professional pieces of audio gear, not just yeah. you know, a guitar pedal. And for me, the, the pedal is more better. So go on, play. More better. I like it. Mm -hmm. 
I think what I liked about it, and particularly for me, when I listen to myself playing back recording, yeah. I have a tendency, you know, to, to, to pick too hard sometimes. And so when you hear it back, it kind of comes out as spiky and sometimes well, this, unpleasant to this listen to. This will take some of that away. Yeah, and I like, I like the fact... It doesn't take it all away, but it takes some of it away. Yeah, and I just like the simplicity of it. I like the fact you could just switch it on very, very quickly, find a setting that suited yeah. and not... I can make it work a little less. And it's definitely, you can hear the sustain, well, the, the, the sense of sustain, it's also adding on to the note as well. So, so then Tim Pierce got one. Did you see his video? No, I haven't seen that yet. He uses a boost pedal. He said, turn the compressor off and use it as a boost pedal. So this is off. Okay. Go on. And that's hardly, you haven't actually turned the volume up that much, have you? Yeah. With it? So I if would I do turn it. the master down yeah, and I turn would do a bit it of way both. up, I'd have a turn it way up, watch. to humbuckers. So he was saying it's not just a compressor, it's a boost it's pedal. It's a boost pedal as well. That's a good one. And horse meat then. I've got to be honest with you, I, and, and it wasn't just us that made the mistake. Most people saw the horse meat as some sort of centaur reference. It and is. therefore put the It's okay. a joke. It eats centaurs for breakfast. Fine. That so, was, so it's was a not joke, a, but right. it was in a copy. There were things that that wouldn't do. As you turn the gain mm. up on a Klon, an old one, it turns the bass down. As right. you're turning it up more and more and more gain, the bass goes down. And I want to control the bass. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to control the, the treble and the bass separately. And there was a high mid-range that the Klon was doing. You couldn't control that either. Mm -hmm. So we did that, and then we spent a lot of time on how to get it to uh, distort asymmetrically so it had a throaty tone without adding mid-range. Mm -hmm. So same thing, play. Hear the throatiness when you bet the note? Yeah, and it, it goes into feedback at very low volumes yeah. really easily, which was probably our favorite thing about it. I mean, so, that's, that's, so that's for me, that's the sound of a PRS. That kind of... Yeah. sense that it's got that slight bit of mid-range, wants to go, wants to find that note that it's going to feed back on, even at really low volume. I mean, we're not loud in here at all. Yeah. I'm going to go louder because I can. But So anyway, that the whole idea was it had a throaty tone. It's adding a whole lot of octave up. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So look, I'll turn it off. When I hear the, when I can sort of, I feel like I'm hearing some of the dry tone through there, the clean dry good. tone. Then we're doing our job, um, same way with a good amp. So what's the, what's the, is that just the nature of, of It's of not the... a parallel circuit right. where, where one is dry mixing with that. The way, the way it works is it's got this germanium throaty distortion circuit. You can add high mid range, you can add or take away treble, you can add or take away bass, and you have complete control over the gain and the level. So I can turn it down 
the gain down and it'll do it even more that way. Can I have some compression as well, mate? Man, there's some great pedals. It's an interesting choice. Was there, is there a sense that you're in your mind you're going, oh, there's other designs as well, or did you are you set on like the compression, the the, the drive, and the flanger, or so it's just an, I wonder what why the those three. The number one question is, okay, you oh, right. replaced the pedals today. What are you coming out with next? I'm like, I was holding my head. I literally couldn't deal with it. Damn it's it! Like, I've asked you a question that everyone else asked. No, no, no. I so but you're, you you was <laughs> you were much more sophisticated about it in a way. What you said was. Are you just going to stay with these three? Yeah. I, I don't want to answer the question, mm. but what I will say is any marketing department would say, don't do a double flanger. That's, that's never been done. Mm. It's not a clone of anything. Don't go after another distortion pedal. And whatever you do, don't do a compressor because they're impossible to control. But we also had a deal was if we didn't think each of the pedals would make the pedal board and stay on it, we weren't going to release it. Yeah. Now, I think there's a good chance these will make the pedal board and stay on it. Oh, good for we you. We sent a bunch of samples to our endorsers. Mm -hmm. They're making their pedal boards. Oh, that's good. Who have, you, who have you signed up recently that you're super, apart from Robin? Who have, you, who have you, kind of, what's the, are there any dreams left? I mean, I know Joe Walsh, last time I spoke to you, I think Joe was one that you were sort of unbelievably proud to have done something with. Well, he played it at Taylor Hawkins at Wembley. Yep. I mean, are you kidding me? But who, I just, if there, if there was, I mean, Obviously, they have to be alive uh, and still capable of playing the guitar. I mean, do you, is there a sense of like, you know, or is there, are there, is there some young guitar player, up and coming guitar player, just going, oh man, I'm so pleased to be involved with this person because they're going to be the next big thing or? Yes. I thought that, I thought if yes. I, the latter was probably easier to answer than the, than the former. <laughs> Look. Let's just talk about Joe for a minute. Yep. We've been making him guitars for a few years now. He had bought a bunch of guitars without us sending them to him that he was playing on TV. Um, Walking Mountain was way he was playing Slide on a Mirror, which I thought was great. Um, and I called him up and I said, I think I have a better one of all the ones you have of mine. I think I have a better one. He goes, that's not possible. <laughs> and I said, can I play it for you over the phone? He goes, sure. So I have a way of putting the phone down on the table and playing it through the amp. He goes, That's, that might be better than everything I have. Send it to me now. Dave Grohl has invited us to play for a big event in England. Yeah. And I'll play it there because I really like what I just heard. And it turns out that Bob Clear Mountain was on the live stream, you know, the, the great mixer, yep. and they turned him up. I mean, it was guitar and vocals. That was so cool. Um, and I, I, that, I mean, I was just, I was watching TV going, oh, thank you, Joe. It was so cool that he had given us the nod. Yeah. He could have brought the James Gang Les Paul. He could have brought the, you know, Hotel California Les Paul. But he, he brought that. And I got a message for him when he landed back in uh, L.A. He goes, the guitar sounded amazing. And it's 103 degrees here. Ah, I mean, he didn't really want to walk into that kind of Fahrenheit hmm. temperature, right? Um, I haven't had a chance to him speak since, since then, but for me, you know, right now I'm so focused on what's going on in Europe and what's going on here that I, I literally am not thinking about who am I going to get next or work with next. I'm trying to... Um, Make sure that Robin's still happy. Make sure yeah. David Grissom's still happy. Make sure that Joe's still happy. Make sure that John's still happy. Just make sure Carlos is still happy. We're, Carlos has got guitar written on his bones. We're sending him guitars all the time. There's all kinds of interaction going on. So It must still blow your mind, doesn't it? What is the 25-year-old Paul Reed Smith just thinking, I won't, won't that be nuts? It's, it's the opposite. I look at a picture of that young man and I go, how do you know? How come the guitars are so similar from the old shop to what we're making now? You think that's the mad bit, do you? As in just how, do, how have you managed to how achieve How did to... I have a sense of it at that age? 
and I have answers to the question, but um, <laughs> I, I, look, it, I don't get bored with this job. For me, it's a complete honor to even be involved in it and that we've been given the chance to get this far and do this. I mean, John McLaughlin told me for 30 years that one day, kids, you'll be good enough to make me a guitar. <laughs> and finally, I got the right to do it. And I looked at him at Frankfurt. I said, are you going to order one finally? And he goes, what do I need another guitar for? And he's playing a violin guitar. And he goes, oh, he looks at me, uh, sh Okay, make me a guitar. And he, I, we made him one, he waved it off. He made him another, he waved it off, and made the third one. He goes, that one, he's looking at his phone. That one's good enough, I'll come to Frankfurt. And we were in tears at dinner. I mean, I was really touched. Not because he loved the guitar. Because when he pulled out of the case in front of me, he goes, oh, no, I love it. But that he knew, almost like Yoda, what was going to happen 30 years later. He, I mean, athletes do this. They go, I knew I was going to score. They know the future. Nobody, <laughs> no athlete ever said, I knew I was going to score and it didn't score. That's not the way it works, right? But athletes get a sense of forward in time, right? Very, very small senses of it. This man was doing it 30 years out. One day, one day, Paul, you'll be good enough. Oh, I was like, you know, I better get to work, right? Oh, I mean, man. you got a you got a genius in Monaco, right? I, 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 I said, I personally, I still think you know, it, 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 it st still, you think there are builders probably out there today now, sort of thinking that maybe they've started their journey, and they, and and if they could just show five percent of the passion and the dedication that you've consistently shown over the, your time in the industry, they've probably got a fairly good chance of making a success of themselves. Not to the level that you've necessarily had, but it is, it's just that, it's just mad. I don't know that I know anyone else that's been in the industry as long as you have that still, you know, seems to be driven by all the same motivations that they had when they started. I don't like history kicking my ass. <laughs> and I brought a guitar, which I, have plans for that I wanted you to get your What a great way. Can we end on this? No, As in, you, you can't, we can't show you, it. You can't show okay, it. Okay, so we'll have but to end what before I, what I, Let me tell you what I do. Okay. I want your feedback. Right. I compared it to some really, really good old guitars right. when I was in Japan, and it won. Right. And everybody th that I've showed it to says, do not touch it except for one little teeny thing. And I want to I talk to you about that. Um, but that... For the people watching, that's part of our feedback loop. I, I, it's not that we're just going to do videos and I'll go see Anderton's and Pete and all this stuff. It's that I want your feedback. You're right in the middle of the hub of this huge industry. You've got all these people here. And what better feedback loop than to ask you, you know, about wow. listening to you play that guitar? It, there, there's been a lot of feedback about how clear sounding the guitar is, and I can hear it in your hands, how clear it is, and you can hear that, right? It's a lovely guitar. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm not playing it even 2% as good yeah, as Robin's yeah, going to yeah, play but it, it. But, but if you have his kind of precision in your hands and you play that light, defined way he does, the clarity is important, right? It's, they're all, they, I've said this before, you know, that there's, Guitar is such a personal thing, you know, the, 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 one of the most pointless arguments in the world is to try and convince someone that, you know, the guitar they like isn't, they shouldn't like it for some reason, you know, like the guitar I Don't like is better. Don't even attempt that. I know, that. it's just like That's rubbish. That's awful. It? But I, I do, you know, I've, we've done a lot of stuff, including some more professional stuff, you know, recordings with Pete and stuff like that. And, and that, his Paul's guitar, which I don't yeah. know where it's gone yeah. now like that, it's, it's always, it always delivers. It might, you know, the, it might not be the one that, that morning you feel like playing them, you might go, oh, dude. but when it does get played, it just delivers. And I think that's something that is fair to say about your guitars generally. It's like, you know, they are, and you say this all the time about the SE stuff, even down at the lower end, it's like, they should all be capable of doing a professional mm -hmm. performance, a professional recording, and it should, it should deliver. And, and they do. And, and Did I ever tell you the story about going to Nashville, which is probably my, one of my proudest moments in terms of like, oh, good. I was in Nashville, I was in a room of 20 studio guitar players, all played in all these touring mm -hmm. Nashville bands. And they said, Paul, if we don't play a PRS, they fire us. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? They said, if we don't play a PRS, they erase our tracks. I said, what are you talking about? They said, when the tune is done, 
they tune the vocal within an, within an inch of its life, and if the guitar track's not in tune with the vocal at the end, they erase it and get another track. And I was like, thank God we studied to put the frets in the right place and the nut in the right place and the bridge in the right place. Thank God. Because that was becoming more important to them keeping their job than anything else. Fascinating. I mean, you know, we were the Antichrist uh, in Nashville, <laughs> but certain people like Brent Rowan and uh, um, Chris Lusinger and David Grissom and all these people started showing up at sessions and started using their PRSs, Brent Mason playing a DGT, all kinds of stuff in it. It made a difference, and now we're part of the fabric. So for me, that's proud to hear you say what you just said. I'm not going to forget. I appreciate it. Um, but, I w but I do want your feedback on this guitar, and I'd like to know it before we go to eat tonight. We'll, we'll do it now. We'll do it. Okay. Not, obviously, okay. we'll say goodbye. Oh, look, it's okay. I get pounded for information about what we're going to come out with. And I look at him, I said, you can't be my marketing department. You've got to give my people at least a chance, right? I honestly, I, 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 before you came here, I wasn't even sure we were going to talk about guitars. Well, we did. Let, let alone we what's did. next. And I would, you know what? I'd rather just, I'd rather just find out. I'd rather just wait until it turned up and then be excited about it. Every yeah, day is like Christmas. scoop is not such a bad thing. Okay. Either. Well, look, look thank I used you to be so able to talk in England and stayed in England. Oh, the talk of you is talking of the world. So that's that's. But it's very kind of you to say so. How many people working in Interchange now? A hundred and thirty. That's double what it was six years ago. Yes, yeah, well, it just, it, it, it's it's double what it was probably three years ago. So yeah, it's gone kind of crazy. And how many times did COVID shut down this country for you? Uh, three. Three. Well, I mean. Again, we, we we had the opposite. So the the online side of the business uh, didn't have to shut down at all. So that that traded all the way through. So, so we the, the, did. The, yeah, I know you guys had it tough. Well, and and of course we well, we didn't we, shut down three times. It was once and then yeah. a whole bunch of small mm. things. Of course, even though you know, even though we didn't shut down, there were plenty of days where we didn't have anything to sell. So obviously, you know, there was big problems getting your guitars and Gibson guitars yeah. and Fender guitars. But no, it, look, I don't know where we'll be in 2025. Mm -hmm. I suspect not everybody who bought a guitar during COVID will carry on playing it. Uh, but That's I, not what I'm hearing. Re, well, what? I was gonna say, I would like to think at the end of all this, They're there will be a lot more. They're telling me it's about 110% of what it was at the beginning of COVID. Yes, is it's Is that about what it is for you? Well, I think we saw, I, I mean, again. COVID was like crazy. Everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody bought some home recording kit and a yeah. new guitar and some pedals and everything like that. And I, but I think when we get to 2024, 25 or whatever, and we look at it, it will we'll have seen probably 20 or 30 percent more guitar players than we maybe uh, thought there might have been and, and look if anybody bought one and had a go and maybe they maybe they put it down and maybe they revisit it five years down the line i just think i still say for me and i've said this hundreds of times in videos it's still my like my happy place like you know whether it's covid or the cost of living crisis or you know any number of shitty things that we've had to cope with over the last few years yeah any of those things if i just need to forget about everything and go you know employing 130 people is stressful some days if i just want to try 450 i was about to say you've grown you know what happens when 450 people in a building i uh, start getting married and having babies man yeah i thought in america you happening? had like laws to stop that. we do but um, <laughs> we do, we do but when it's co-workers there's no laws Oh, I thought, yeah, because like over that, here, you it definitely have can't do have with, laws like that. Know, big laws around managers and employees, mm. but not around co-workers. Well, look, man, but this, isn't that just beautiful? That just means the PRS family gets even bigger. Yeah. Literally get babies born ah, into production that's lines. Great. It's just awesome. Anyway, that's look, great. we're done. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm going to look at this uh, top secret prototype guitar and definitely not tell anyone about it. Uh, and then we're going to get some dinner in a really expensive Italian restaurant. And I'm paying. You are. I'm exactly. Paying. Thank you so much. All right, good. <laughs> bye All bye, right, everyone. Good. Bye.